Okay, so let's talk about the modelled multi-fuel equation. Now this is probably the most exciting fuel equation now that we've got. What this is, it's especially for use with blended fuels and it uses a volumetric efficiency type model fuel equation as well. So really what it gives you is really accurate fuel for blended fuels. That's when you're using a mixture of fuels, something like petrol and ethanol for example. For a start, let's talk about some of the benefits of this mode. Right, so the first thing to clarify here is the modelled multi-fuel equation takes on all of the benefits that we talked about earlier for the modelled fuel equation, but it's got some more as well. So the first one is accurate fueling regardless of the current fuel blend. What this means is so long as the ECU knows what the current fuel blend is, it's going to choose the correct amount of fueling regardless of the percentage of ethanol or petrol that you've currently got. It's also um, going to take advantage of knowing the fuel parameters for that secondary fuel. Uh, things like injector flow characteristics, stoichiometric ratio, we're going to talk about some of them some more when we talk about how this works. But what it does is it takes in quite a lot of different factors to do with that secondary fuel. Um, this is something that not a lot of other ECUs out on the market do. Um, normally they use a fudge to add a multiplier onto the normal petrol one. Let's, um, let's move on to another benefit for now though. So, the blend information that the ECU requires can come from a variety of sources. It can come from an ethanol content sensor, it can come from an analog um, potentiometer, or it can come from a digital input switch. So you've got three different options there, and um, we're going to talk about them a little bit further in depth soon too. And the final thing I want to say in terms of benefits for the multi-fuel mode is it's not restricted to just petrol and ethanol. You could use um, really any mixture of fuel that's mi that, that, that mix well. So um, two grades of petrol, maybe something like C16 or Avgas. As long as you can input the data into the ECU um, and the fuels are going to be mixed correctly, then you're able to use those two different fuels. So let's take a look now at how the modelled multi-fuel equation works. The first thing that the modelled multi-fuel equation needs to know um, is what is the current blend of fuel. Now there's a variety of options for this. Probably the most common and probably recommended way to do this is to use an ethanol content sensor. So an ethanol content sensor is something that's going to be wired up to a digital input on the ECU and it can tell the ECU anywhere from 0% up to 100% ethanol that's currently flowing through the fuel system. Uh, the, the other good thing about the ethanol content sensor is it also tells the ECU the current fuel temperature which can be taken into, into consideration when working out the correct amount of fueling to apply. The next option that we have there is an analog input. So we can connect up something like a, a variable potentiometer um, to the ECU, you would connect it up to an analog volt channel and we might say set something like fully clockwise to fully petrol and fully anti-clockwise to be fully ethanol. It would then up to be up to you to adjust the potentiometer to the correct position for the current blend of fuel you're running. And then thirdly, we have a digital input option. So what this is, is one position on the switch is going to be petrol, and the other um, position is going to be your secondary fuel, probably ethanol. Uh, this is for more for a situation where you might drive to the track on something like petrol, and then once you get to the track, you're going to drain your fuel, you're going to put in ethanol for your race, um, and you're going to switch that switch to tell the ECU we're now using ethanol instead of petrol. So the ECU then has the correct blend information, it knows what's currently running through, it's able to use that information in the multi-fuel equation to give the correct amount of fueling. So what's going to look at that blend, the current blend ratio? Well, there's two volumetric efficiency tables, one for the first fuel, petrol, and one for the second fuel, ethanol. What it's going to do is it's going to look at that current blend ratio and it's going to mix those two tables according to the current blend ratio. The same thing's going to happen for the fuel charge cooling. Different fuels have a different charge cooling effect on the air intake, um, intake air temperature, sorry, intake air. And so those different fuels are, are going to need to be um, known by the ECU of the current blend. So once once the ECU knows that current blend, it's able to mix those two charge cooling numbers and select the correct one for the current blend, which is going to give better fueling. So this information gets fed into the air charge estimate. What well, this is, the ECU is trying to determine the amount of air flowing through the engine, looks at that blend information, looks at the current engine size, 
looks at the current charge temperature, looks at the number of cylinders, and it looks also at the load that the ECU is currently seeing. All of that comes together to form the current air charge estimate, similar to the model fuel equation as we talked about earlier. Then the ECU needs to determine what is the correct amount of fuel for the current amount of air moving through the engine. So to do this, it looks at the current blend and it looks at the fuel density for the primary fuel, petrol, and the secondary fuel, ethanol. And what it does is it mixes those fuel density values depending on the current blend that the ECU is seeing from the content sensor. The same thing works for the fuel density temperature coefficient. So different fuels, as well as having different densities, are also going to change their density differently depending on the temperature. So because the ECU is able to take advantage of this information, it's able to provide a more accurate fueling than if we just had one fuel density temperature coefficient number. Also coming into the fuel mass calculation is the stoichiometric ratio. Different fuels are going to run different stoichiometric ratios and the ECU needs to blend these um, to get the correct stoichiometric ratio for the mixture of fuel that is currently being run. Also, there's going to be two lambda target tables, one for the primary fuel and one for the secondary fuel. If you wanted to, you could run these two lambda target tables at exactly the same values, but if for some reason you want to run a slightly different target um, on your secondary fuel, that's quite possible as well. And the ECU is going to blend those two target tables according to the current blend of fuel. All of that comes together to give us the fuel mass to inject into the ECU. Next, though, we need to add some injector characterization to that fueling number because the injectors are going to have a different effect depending on the current blend of fuel going through them. The first thing that it's going to want to know is the density of the fuel. This is going to have a, a varying effect upon the ECU. Um, the, the fuel density is obviously different between two different fuels and the ECU needs to know that to apply the correct injector characteristics. It's going to look at those two fuel density values and it's going to blend them depending on what the current blend of fuel is. We've also got the minimum injector pulse width as we talked about earlier with the model fuel equation. And we've also got the injector reference pressure. So this is the pressure that the ECU is currently running as we've typed in to let it know. It's got the short pulse width adder table, as we talked about earlier. This is the area in the injectors down low where the injector is no longer linear. We've also got the fuel pressure. Now this is an optional input, but as I mentioned with the model fuel equation, it's highly recommended. It means that the ECU is able to compensate for any pressure changes that it sees in the fuel system. And finally there we've got the injector dead times. So these are going to come from the injector data sheet as with the modelled and the traditional fuel equation. All of this information comes together and the injector characterization information is applied onto the fuel calculation and that gives us our actual injection pulse width. So that's pretty much it for the modelled multi-fuel equation. What we're going to do now is we're going to quickly move through a quick summary of the three fuel types again. And yeah, remember to, if you've got any questions, ask them in the chat there and we'll be answering these shortly. So, just to summarise, we've got the traditional fuel equation, we've got the modelled fuel equation, we've got the modelled multi-fuel equation. We can see on the traditional one, not as many inputs as the other ones, but still able to provide good fueling. If we look at the modelled um, fuel equation, we can see there's a lot more inputs. This added complexity allows the ECU to deliver a much better result. It simply knows a lot more about what's going on. And then, Finally, the modelled multi-fuel equation. The key of this is letting the ECU know what is the current blend of fuel. And so we've got there, um, again, ethanol content sensor, analog inputs or digital input options for that information into the ECU. It comes together and because we've got basically two tables of values for the two different fuels for a lot of different settings, it's able to mix that depending on the current blend and provide the correct amount of fuel to inject into the engine for the um, mixture of fuel types that is currently present. Okay, next up though, I just want to say um, congratulations to David. David races in the, the Japanese drag series over in the UK at Santa Pod, and David's just won the championship again this year, and so I want to say a big congratulations, David, you're doing really well, and uh, we're really proud that you're running a bike in your, in your skyline.